Art the Clown went from an indie film villain to one of the most known horror icons of all time in a very short span. And when I'm talking about one of the most known, I'm talking about whether or not you've seen the movies, you have for sure seen Art the Clown, whether it be on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, whatever the case may be. And I'm talking popularity that can get you Funko Pops, t-shirts, blankets, animatronics at Party City and Spirit Halloween. I mean, Art the Clown is everywhere. But being everywhere comes with a price of everyone wanting to know who Art the Clown even is. Well, today you are in luck because that is exactly what we're gonna go over and I'm gonna tell you who Art the Clown is. I'm gonna explain him. I'm gonna explain the movies, everything you need to know about this character. So go ahead and grab yourself a snack, get a little drink, sit down, sit tight, and we're gonna talk about it. So if you haven't seen the Terrifier movies, Art the Clown might just be a creepy guy in some clown makeup that looks like he's into a lot of nasty stuff, but there's actually so much more to dive into when we're talking about the character himself. Everything around Art the Clown falls back on one name in particular, and that is Damien Leone, who is the producer of all of the Terrifier and Art the Clown related films. He first introduced Art the Clown on a short film in 2008. This short film went by the name The Ninth Circle, which basically followed Art the Clown stalking a girl in the subway, bringing her to, well, Satan himself. Don't worry, it gets weirder. This was the first glimpse we got at Art the Clown, and this was actually played by a guy named Mike Gianelli. Mike Gianelli was a close friend of Damien Leone, and he's actually not an actor at all, but Damien needed someone to play the clown, and Mike stepped up. Then we go to another short film named Terrifier in 2011, also featuring Art the Clown. These short films were posted on YouTube and were able to garner enough attention for a producer to hit up Damien Leone and ask if he wanted Art the Clown to be part of an anthology movie that he was making. Damien was somehow able to make the entire anthology about characters that he was creating and make it all revolve around Art the Clown in the end. This movie would go on to be known as All Hallows Eve. If you've seen it, you've seen it. If you haven't, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really hold any substantial upholding in the Terrifier franchise. You don't really need to see All Hallows Eve to understand anything about Art the Clown. It's basically something you can go and watch if you want some more Art the Clown, but I wouldn't really recommend it if you're trying to get into the Terrifier franchise. Demi Leone is on record saying he was throwing anything at the wall just seeing if it would stick. He had witches, he had monsters, he had Art the Clown, and Art was the thing that was able to just boost this movie where it needed to be. After this success, Art the Clown was in his first feature film, Terrifier. Yes, it's named after the short film that he was already in. This movie is centered around Art the Clown, and this is really everyone's main introduction to the character. This movie takes place on Halloween night and it features Art the Clown stalking and terrorizing two women, along with some other scenes that would probably get me banned if I went into detail. The very beginning of this movie portrays Art the Clown as a guy getting dressed to go out and stalk and kill people on Halloween. He's putting on clown makeup, he's putting on his hat, he's getting his tools ready, and from the first point of view, it looks like Art the Clown is just a guy. But the reason that gets more confusing is because at the very end of the movie, Art the Clown essentially unalives himself when he is caught by the police, and while he's basically being sent off in a body bag, he resurrects himself. So obviously, you cannot be human and then unalive yourself and then a few hours later just resurrect yourself like nothing happened. But luckily, this is where Terrifier 2, which is the second movie in the Terrifier franchise, picks up. We get a lot more detail and backstory on Art the Clown in this film. One of the first scenes in Terrifier 2, Art the Clown is at a laundromat washing his clothes and he actually sees a little girl who the fandom has named Little Pale Girl. But Art the Clown is actually the only person at this point who can see this girl. There's another guy in the laundromat looking at him like he's crazy because he's playing patty cake with absolutely nothing. But in Art's eyes, he does see this little demon. Or ghost. Or girl. I don't know. Art the Clown does some typical Art the Clown stuff, and if you fast forward later in the movie, we are introduced to Sienna and her family. Sienna will essentially be the final girl in this film, and her brother Jonathan plays a huge role in this as well. Sienna and Jonathan's father was an artist who tragically passed away, but before he passed away, he was seeing Art the Clown in his mind. This is basically explained as if Art the Clown is able to get into the mind of artist, which could be the whole meaning behind the name of Art the Clown. That combined with the fact that he likes to leave art in his scenes, if you know what I'm talking about. 
that. It's kind of gross. Speaking of artists, Sienna takes after her father, and she makes really good cosplay costumes. She's actually pretty good at it. Her being an artist of her own can naturally further the speculation that art can infiltrate their minds. She goes to sleep and has a dream of the Clown Cafe, and when she wakes up, the art that she has created is literally on fire. So art was able to enter through her dream and make something occur in the real world, again, something that a human is not going to be capable of. And on top of everything happening, Jonathan is actually fascinated with Art the Clown. He's researching all the facts and the details, he wants to dress up as Art for Halloween, Sienna and her mother, they think he's kind of a little bit disturbed and he does not need to be doing that. But what we don't know at this point is that Jonathan can actually see Art the Clown and the little girl as well. He sees them in the hallway playing with an unalived possum, and then they throw it at him, get out of there, and the teacher catches him just holding this nasty, gruesome possum, and obviously they think he's a weirdo again. Which at this point, I would also think my child was a weirdo if I didn't have any backstory on what happened before the teacher actually saw him with the possum. So if Jonathan can see him, Sienna can see him, and their father can see him, it seems like Art the Clown has some type of vendetta against this family. So as this film follows Art the Clown doing what Art the Clown does, we start making it further and further to the end and the climax of the movie. Jonathan and Sienna's mother is taken out, Sienna's best friend is taken out, and for a second it almost seemed like Jonathan himself was going to be taken out. So Art the Clown and the little pale girl abduct Jonathan and they take him to the carnival where Art the Clown is known to live, and the little pale girl calls Sienna from Jonathan's phone and does an impression of him and makes it sound like she needs to get there ASAP. So that's exactly what happens. She gets to the carnival, but it is all a trap set up by Art the Clown to just take him out. So we get to the huge fight scene, Sienna versus Art the Clown, and Sienna wins. She takes the sword that was made for her cosplay costume, which... I don't think it should have really been a real sword that you're carrying around a party, but good on Sienna, it saved her life today. And she does what she has to do, and she takes out Art the Clown. So at this point, we think that the family is going to move on, they took out Art the Clown, but as any naturally good horror movie goes, no. We cut to an insane asylum where we see Vicky. Now Vicky was a character introduced in the first Terrifier film, she was the sister of one of the main girls in the film. Art the Clown kind of like ate her face and somehow possessed her body with his evil abilities. She's been in an insane asylum since and she's just getting worse and worse since we first seen her in the film. At this point Vicky is pregnant, she is in the insane asylum and she's pregnant. Nobody knows how, nobody knows why. She doesn't have access to get pregnant like that. I probably should have worded that a little differently. But she gives birth, and when they see her give birth, it is the head of Art the Clown. Art the Clown is born through Vicky, but just his head, and she's sitting there just holding it like a baby. So Art the Clown kind of has this child's play effect, whereas with Chucky, you could burn him, you could shoot him, you could cut him up, you could bury him, but you cannot get rid of him. It seems like that might be the case with Art the Clown as well. Because while yes, you did kill Art the Clown, not once but twice, you still have Vicky who has his evil entity inside of her apparently. She's gonna give birth to him. But then if you don't have Vicky, you still have the little pale girl out there somewhere. It seems like this is just gonna be a domino effect of the never ending resurrection of Art the Clown. Luckily for fans of the franchise, and for me especially, Terrifier 3 is on deck to be released in October of this year. This will no doubtedly give us a little bit more information on Art the Clown and Sienna's family, and that'll help us further our speculations and investigations on what everything actually is. So with all this said, what is the final conclusion on who is Art the Clown? I think Art the Clown is just an evil demon entity sent by Satan himself to terrorize the world, or terrify the world, I should say. That was bad. There's no way Art the Clown is a human, because there's no way that you could have your head born for somebody, or just survive two deaths like they never even happened. So there's no way you're just a human wandering around the streets in some creepy makeup. And that actually adds a lot more to the film and to the substance, because if he was just a regular guy in makeup, he could die too easily. But if he is this evil entity, then we can get just endless backstory and lore and films, whatever we need from it. I do want to say, if you guys have yet to see Terrifier 1 or 2, you need to go and watch those films. If you're a little sensitive to gore, they might not be your type of deal. But given the rise in popularity of Art the Clown and the Terrifier films, this is something that you're going to want to keep up on if you're going to call yourself a true horror fan. That's going to wrap it up for today, you guys. If you did enjoy this video, then please be sure to leave a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments. 
I'm really branching out and just trying something new with this whole horror thing, so if you do enjoy it, then be sure to let me know that as well. As always, be sure to click the subscribe button and keep it here for the latest. My name is Hayden, it was a pleasure having you on the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!